Welcome back to Black Our Couch Reviews. I'm your host, Christina. We're back for another episode of Upload Season 3, Episode 2, entitled Strawberry, written by Allison Brown, directed once again by Jeffrey Blitz. I like this episode more so than the first, but that's because I got me some Luke and Alicia, and it doesn't take much to please me. (laughs) And I like the flow of this episode a lot better. Even though what was going on in Lakeview was far more interesting and funny than what was going on with our our couple, it still had moments where I laughed out loud and that brought me back to the reason why I like this show because it's corny, but charmingly so. Once again, we have a guest on the podcast, which is my next door neighbor's dog. It's very distracting, but I have a time frame of when I need to get shit done. And right now I need to podcast. So eventually that will fade away. (laughs) And if it's really bad, I'll just throw some music down. Maybe that will drown out the sound of desperately seeking owner. Let's jump into this uh, recap, shall we? While doing makeup, a newscaster explains after the Luds attack, Freon is shut down for good because in life, you can never have nice things. So they were successfully able to convince the world that Luds had enacted some riots and no one at all noticed that none of their family members came back home for burial (laughs) because if they did they wonder what the fuck happened to their heads Nora and Nathan show up to a person's home trying to return their son Elijah who was not in fact killed in the Ludd riots but is in fact in their custody their son Logan who was upstairs previously trying to find more information out on Luds uh, for free because he didn't want to have to pay for information. That's fucked up. But nothing is able to be found on the internet. So they've been scrubbed by the billionaires that control everything, including the media and what people believe. There's a little bit of life imitating art or art imitating life who knows but plays them elijah's last message when they threaten nathan and nora with a gun to leave their property that's enough to convince them to invite them to dinner but i'm gonna need more information up front what do you mean he's on here explain to me explain to me followed up with how do i confirmed that he is all right because someone clearly lied to me and said that he died in the riots i didn't get that information just randomly so if something else happened clearly more is going on but no they're just like come in have some pork some pork parmesan nora introduces herself as sally ann whereas nathan goes for ferdinand from portugal because he once dated a Brazilian model and she's like, oh yeah, they are the best lovers. I kind of want to find that out. I'd be down to clown (laughs) to make that assessment. Lucy announces since AI has outgrown their line by line code, the engineer has been downgraded and his team and now they need to be more human-like so they will be taught by an actual human their new manager being Li Shi Wi Shi with the Bi Shi who's going to be managing 300 floors which is a lot she's like oh thank you it is well deserved though meanwhile stalker Tinsley having watched Nathan and Ingrid's reconnection fest is busted out by the fact that not only was she watching but that she's the one that rebooted Nathan's backup copy because he went missing for one day. And since uh, this is a copy from one month ago, it 
allows for Ingrid to have this second chance. Chance. <laughs> what did I say previously? I don't know. I'm just going to leave that in. But I don't feel bad for Tinsley here, even though Ingrid was pretty was pretty uh vicious at least nathan wanted to fuck her a month ago and clearly he's still into it (laughs) before he fell in love with nora he smiled at you bitch and you went from there to some seriously creepy places and continued to do so as if it's not a problem so when you lay down or act like a dog you're going to get some fleas And now she's at the mercy of the tyrannical turn that Ingrid has decided to embrace, I guess, in secret. Because all of this talk of change don't actually apply if it's not genuine. (laughs) She forces Tinsley to have a Shrek face and boobs on top of boobs until she has back problems. You have fucked up now. Ingrid has learned nothing. So if it turns out that Tinsley ends up catching her man for the second time, that would be karmatic. (laughs) I know that's not a word, but I like it better. Bill and Cheyenne really aren't about asking in-depth questions. Like once again, how do I talk to my son? How do I confirm that he's okay? Cause I thought he was dead and you're just giving me a disc with an ID card and then confirmation that he said he was going to upload, but I don't know if he actually uploaded. Also what's in the rest of that bag and the duffel bag in there. And then what were they trying to show us with that close up shot? Cause I didn't get it at all. I thought maybe we were going to find out that Logan had stolen something and maybe we will in the next episode because I feel as if that's a kid that's going to look through your shit in the middle of the night because he's that curious and he feels like these people might have some answers. (laughs) Um, Now they're focused on this young couple's future children and quoting Beyonce in a manner that I actually cringed at. That's like a grandpa repeating something he know it's not for him. It's not for you, grandpa. Cheyenne lost her ring finger and was content with the week off, was willing to give up the other, which is math I do not calculate, miss. Not at all. Nathan is fearful of his body failing and the fact that eventually he may have to go back, something he reminds Nora. Alicia visits Luke, who is sculpting Nathan, to tell him she is no longer going to be his angel due to the fact that she's going to be a manager. Something she is nervous about, despite being all confident earlier. But you know, you can always tell your true feelings to your friends or your future husbands. And he knows she'll kill it. He gets to help choose which angel to replace her, but is indifferent. She's like, oh, it's cool that you being cool about this because we know you got separation anxiety issues. However, when she leaves, he panics and she's already replaced by the Russian. (laughs) I forgot her name. I love that character, though. (laughs) So I'm glad she's back. I'm going to remember it next time. Uh, It's like, not you. I have one rule. Do not fall in love with me. Nathan and Nora try to convince their host that the Luds aren't responsible for all the things they're blamed on, but to avoid suspicion, drop the topic and told they must stay and sleep in separate rooms because they're traditional and they're not married. So you're not allowed to be in this underneath this roof. Like, I mean, I didn't even ask to stay here. Honestly, I was ready to leave. But they didn't realize they got caught up in this personal racket called slave for a day. (laughs) Alicia with her first night class 
Uh, with so many of the same faces of the AI guys. They do not like being taught by a human. They just want them to add rules. And she just wants them to understand the different ways okay can be interpreted (laughs) via her many examples. Not a spitball in her fro, though. However, when she said, okay, that time, they definitely knew which one that was. It's about to go down. I think she is missing the the way in which they are already matured. (laughs) But bringing it back to school was hilarious. This is my favorite part of the episode. Nora finds out when it's time to do the dishes and show appreciation for the pork parm that isn't really good, but she pretended it was. Nathan isn't about that life, even when it's pointed out to him. Choosing to fictitionally go to the bathroom to play on his phone instead of do chores. And down, where you from, nigga? What do you know? Where you from, my nigga? What- For a minute, I was going to be like, well, you know, you can... I mean, you can't tell him he can't take a shit if you got to go take a shit, but... Clearly, the way he popped up that phone, that was not his intent. He didn't pretend that that was not a lie. Nora makes excuses for his entitlement. Poor Luke feels alone and abandoned watching old videos of him and his BFF before deleting them at his new angel's behest, saying that'll be better for you if you just forget all about those people. Logan wants to know while sharing a bunk bed with Nathan. If what they say about the Luds is true, his brother seemed to understand they lost their land by being sued. (laughs) And he says it's hard to know the truth with so many lies out there. Another art imitating real life or vice versa. He says, I don't know, buddy, but one thing is definitely for show. That white dude you got up there is not LeBron James. What? What the fuck? They didn't even try to get a lookalike. And the fact that it's people out on the country, in the farms, you know, those rural areas are the ones that are most susceptible to misinformation because they're that disconnected. And purposely so from accessing anything from the truth. And that's why so many are banning books right now. Nora forgives Nathan too easily before she embarrasses herself. Saying she can't sleep and that she has nothing on something. Logan (laughs) overhears instead and tells her if she needs PJs, just ask his mom. He was so chill about it. And the fact that he didn't even think it was sexual shows how innocent He really is, because any other, what, 12-year-old boy would definitely know what she's talking about. The next day, they are put to work, because this is why you never take hospitality. Nothing in life is free. They kidnapped y'all ass and put y'all to actual labor. Apparently, pig tumors grow more so than the pig, so they decided to grow the tumors since they taste the same, the CGI was so painful. <laughs> um, then we go back to Lakeview and Ingrid is talking with her hairstylist, dropping all the tea. Because that's what women, some women are want to do. Not me. I'd be like, shut the fuck up. I actually have this... Um, appointment with the hairstylist on Saturday and oh my gosh I already know she's gonna be talking and I'm really gonna have to politely tell her fuck you bitch shut the fuck up bitch back the fuck up I'd like to fuck up you I'm gonna tell y'all about my experience with her on the Jones Chronicles and I swear if I hadn't already paid her this $25 deposit bruh man man I would not She does not have a return customer. Ingrid wants to be genuine and down to earth like Norma. So she has her hair cut like her. (laughs) I laugh so hard because that's not even her hairstyle anymore. 
Luke is still in his robe watching and deleting memories, deciding to fill in his gaps with dragon tails. They are Nora and Nathan taken to a cow that shouldn't exist ever and shown how to milk the cheeses, which feels like putting on a condom and jerking off a guy into it, then tying it up. I am disgusted. Two of the AIs pass notes to each other. <laughs> like, I miss the other guy. Like, her words are so confusing. And then they hug. She feels frustrated. So she looks for Luke on her phone, who's still crying in his robe. But you're asking them to show emotion and they clearly just showed emotion while you was talking. So maybe shift your focus to maybe they are far more advanced than you realize, especially when she's like, one of them mooned me. I think they learned that from me. (laughs) She visits Luke to restore uh, a memory that he deleted for a stupid episode of I don't know what show that was. I'm sure it was one I probably saw as a child, but not one in which I recall, even though they said it in this episode. I'm still like, yeah, yeah, I didn't watch that at all. Um, The memory of her when they was playing tennis and he wanted to learn how to twerk was hilarious. She's like, why would you want to delete these happy memories? I thought you were deleting war memories. These are you and Nathan acting like an idiot. Me laughing at you being an idiot. He says everyone moved on and he thought he should too. But she admits she isn't going anywhere and that she is hated by her pupils. He knows uh, what it feels to be in the back of the class. They're just anxious and feeling like failures. She says she knows how that feels because she feels like a failure and he calls her a rock star master of the universe, which she saves as her personal memory for herself, which is a nice little scene between them. Ivan can't believe Choke's last angel let him eat off of them, which she didn't because she had some (laughs) self-respect. one guy came in like oh lord (laughs) that was funny as fuck and he goes because he confronted nathan earlier like i saw you in the bathroom you were looking at me and he's like i don't know what you're talking about and this is perfect because i was thinking how they're gonna deal with choke clearly having seen him but then how could he reconcile i saw you out in the real world if you're still here So when he starts asking questions, Ivan's like, no, Nathan hasn't left Lakeview. How is that even possible? Also, you've asked me this before. Are you okay? Don't you remember that? Actually, not are you okay? Don't you remember? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So now I know why Ivan was assigned to him. They're going to make this man think he got dementia. Nora and Nathan fight about his spoiled nature. And although he admitted he does know how to do dishes, that's worse that you left her to do them. <laughs> like in nothing. Oh, I've never done that. I don't think that's something I want to do is almost more understandable than I know what it is to be a polite individual. I just chose not to be. You are spoiled, sir. And willfully so. She's like, well, I felt insecure because I had waited on you all this time. And I'm like, but did you really wait on him? Because I felt as if you always, always was chatting up. Like there was no, let me do your mani petties. Let me come and like, no, no, it felt like a pretty not slavish relationship. So no, I felt like she wasn't being honest in that moment. Like, no, you're kind of entitled and really stupid (laughs) like you're cute you have your your things but when it comes to certain aspects of what I would want from my man 
like emotional intelligence and a need to do instead of tell me about your traumatic past that doesn't make an excuse for your current behavior I don't know I don't know I'm not as shipping them as everyone else I'm not not shipping them but I don't think I'm as bored on their ship but I don't think I ever have been after their debt is paid they just leg it because that somehow became their journey (laughs) returning people who are not actually in freon but murdered and trapped on a drive with no way of setting them free like what's the actual plan here what do you mean just give them back the people oh this is your your family member but how are they (laughs) going yeah there's a lot of holes and their their long-term planning and that's also an issue between both of them ingrid decides to try telling the truth for once and forgot that she made their baby as well talking about no more lies i'm like uh you forgot what you already put in motion he actually took it well when he found out that she had been pretending to upload for him and been in a bathtub he's like oh that's actually really sweet and romantic that you would do that for me um and simply telling me the truth instead of lying actually has value and because he walking around with two dragons and a cross between a beaver and i don't even know the crocodile hunter i i can believe that tinsley is told to stand down because she has ultimate control over her at this point and of the copies of nathan that she has at her disposal which is kind of crazy and not great in such a crazy woman's hand (laughs) her scene with the stylist was hilarious it's like iconic (laughs) so yeah i like this episode a lot more i gave it an 8.5 out of 10 uh we do have feedback this week so let's hop into the mailbag Hey, Christina, it's me, Shy. I am here to give my feedback for Upload Season 3, the first two episodes, since I missed out on giving feedback for Episode 1. Um, yeah, yeah, as you know, I've been, <laughs> things have been a little hectic in the life. Um, no, I mean, I wouldn't say that. I mean, my weekends are open in regards to work. It's just that let me see. I mean, football. I mean, I've already explained that in another feedback. You know, I, hey, I'm a huge football fan. So during the fall, those, those weekends are usually tied up, especially, you know, when my teams are doing well, I'm all over it. So, um, it's been, uh, been interesting trying to juggle, but I was determined to give feedback to catch up a little bit. And so that's what I'm trying to do. I already did that for Gen V and I'm doing it for this one. Luckily, it was only two episodes, so it wasn't too bad. And they're not that long of episodes. Um, And I'm trying to get stuff in before I take off for my birthday trip. So just trying to wrap up some things and get some things in order and all that good stuff. So as for this, these two episodes... um, I will say I am what I'm looking forward forward to and hoping for in season three is just I feel like we've been kind of marking time like a little bit stagnant in regards to the progression of the story um, and the characters. I'm, I'm really looking for character growth and just to get to the, you know, get to the nitty gritty. And I feel like and I really I don't know, maybe 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 I'm just ready for some other like for them to like wrap this up and then some new threat to emerge um because I feel like we've been kind of on the same threat for going on this season now and so and I get it I mean which is fine I mean each each season is eight episodes long um but at some point you just want them to wrap I want them to wrap up 
this whole thing and just, you know, move on to something else. If there is something else, maybe this is it. I don't know. Maybe it's just not interesting enough to keep for it to be six, three seasons deep. I don't know. I don't know. I'll think about it and get back to you. <laughs> All I know is that's just how I'm thinking as I was watching these first two episodes. It's like, OK, can we start getting to the nitty gritty of it all um i'm with you i listened to your podcast so um yeah i was definitely missing alicia and uh and luke in episode one because they 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 turn out to be they've turned out to be my favorite characters on this show i just love their dynamic i love them individually and um and their dynamic i don't know i just i don't know i i don't know where it came from it caught me by surprise how much I like Luke, but um, I do. Uh, so, not that I don't like Nora and Nathan. It's just, yeah. It's just, I and I'm and I'm I'm ready for them to stop the thing that they've been doing because it, it's starting to be annoying. Um, just do, just talk to each other, talk it out. So I'm glad that their issue didn't continue on. So I think in that regard, we've made progress because. You know, they had some, which is, which makes sense when you've been in a long distance relationship, um, you finally are together in the same space. There is going to be that, that adjustment and that those growing pains that, that tend to go on, um, and being in each other's presence and dealing with all of that. So, I mean, I, I mean, to me, I thought that was realistic to, um, equate that to be basically being in a long distance relationship and coming together uh and trying to navigate that um so i i like that aspect of it um but yes they do have this tendency of you know not saying anything to each other and just letting things uh just letting things fester but luckily this time around um they talked it out um i did think the whole cow that farm cow thing i'm Thinking there is a point to that other than them, you know, having to get any advice from the the wife, because I'm like, damn, I, I'm, I'm not understanding why they need to be uh, I mean, outside of dropping off the their son's stuff. I, I don't know why they had to stay there, but um, it's all good. There is to get to their next stage of the relationship, I guess. Um, but it was gross. The cow thing was gross. Uh, the pig cancer thing. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Uh, I don't, I don't know why that would be something people would think is appetizing, or even think would be appetizing, or think to do in order to eat it to see if it would be appetizing. It's like, no, none of the above. No. <laughs> I know we like to eat many parts of the pig, but uh, the pig cancer? No, I'm, I'm no. Um, but again, I'm sure somebody will say that about chitlins, pig guts, so pig intestines, I'm like, no, no. So I guess, you know, we can't judge. Um, man, Alicia, I tell you, uh, I, I was feeling for her. I'm like, no, ma'am, this is not, no, this is not the life for you. Uh, and then of course, what, what was she? Lishi, Wishi, she's my Bishi. I'm like, oh my God no problematic in itself but i mean it was funny but it was cringe at the same time um so alicia's trying to figure out her life and luke is trying to figure out his life without alicia and um and nathan his his two constants um and so he was having a hard time and i was like no don't leave luke that's I mean, I love their dynamic. And so I want to see more of it. So thankfully, she came back. Um, I just I don't know. I just the way they are is just something about them is just so, so cute, um, adorable. Uh, let's see what else we got. We see Nathan with the bleeding. So we the constant reminder that t- his time is limited. Um uh, I I don't know. I I again, I'm I'm not gonna continue on with 
this 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 episode wasn't that interesting to me to where I need to be on and on and on about it. I liked it, Luke and Alicia stuff. Um, the other stuff is it's it's getting there, I guess. Um, I just I just want I just I'm just ready to for this to conclude, and you know I'm just not interested in Ingrid and her her uh issues of not being able to move on and self-esteem self-worth apparently she uh is struggling with that because she can't seem to let this dude go that obviously doesn't want her and I'm sure and now she's trying to change who she is as a person to please this guy and it's not going to work in the end so but you know I guess some people Got to learn things the hard way in relationships. I can definitely relate to that. So that's all I have for this one on that note. Until next time, much love, peace, and hair grease, and black girl magic, queen of the couch, shy. Thank you, Queen Shy, for your thoughts on the episode. I feel much of your sign when it comes to the Nathan and Nora story arc, as well as agree that they could flesh out the world. I think now that they know they've been renewed for another season, they don't need to keep the same particular threat. They can flush it out. Uh, maybe they intend to, um, to, to involve someone a little bit more, not necessarily imposing because we're not dealing with the smartest crew, but <laughs> I think we could focus on another aspect. I thought this returning people journey is fine because it keeps our other two people moving with a purpose. I just feel like I'm missing a lot of scenes in the in-between. We just casually rolled over, um... I forgot his name already, but his death, uh, you know, they didn't really give much exposition on what they intended to do. We're just now on this journey, which is fine. I just need them to add some dialogue in there. Maybe it just got cut um, in the editing room because that seems to be their particular goal right now. But for how long are they going to meet anyone else from LUDs? LUDs seem to have only been this organic farmer organization. So I don't even know how big it's supposed to be as a group. But I do know that they did talk about the food shortages. So they have to grow their own food. Like I think there's no longer any actual animals around. They, they went more into this season one, like when she would have to talk about how much money she needed, like they were really getting into the economic struggles of people because the wealth divide was so significantly different that, you know, they had to live by nothing but processed type of food like this. So now the farms, instead of you know, harvesting and growing and feeding real livestock, they're forced to, you know, kind of utilize the technology to make food for people, but it's only this shit that's being made, right? That's why Nathan was kind of like, oh, what the like, she was thinking, oh, okay, this is good, even though it's not that good, but he really couldn't stomach it because he's been spoiled having actual real food uh so he's actually was treated better in death than he was in life i also hate chitlins can't stand them so if they go and talk about that particular issue uh, yeah i just need something for them to to do and a little bit more than just redefining their romance i don't think i just ever was bound to nathan as a person (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I feel like sometimes Nora with him just acts like she takes three steps backwards in her intelligence. And I'm not cool with that dynamic, which takes away from it. But then they have other really cute scenes where, you know, he apologizes and, you know, he, he tries to to make it up to her. But ultimately, he's 
feeling a lot more like he doesn't know her past and she's feeling a lot like you're everything that I would typically not go for and that's still bothering her and lastly while you're not interested in the Ingrid thing remember that Nathan was a piece of shit before he met Nora like his whole thing was he's the one that gave them Freon to utilize and how you know he was thick with Ingrid so I think it's possible that she very much can get back the person that he was or this version of him might not be as appalled by her actions and counteractions because he hasn't had that that um self-discovery by wanting to be a better person for someone else and himself eventually but for someone else as well uh when he met nora so while she is shooting for um shooting for zero i can under under, i can understand with her not having much else to lean back on (laughs) how this could be the only genuine thing that ever batted to her because it's the only genuine thing she ever had definitely less empathetic for her situation though though i'm not really sympathetic towards tinsley but i'm glad you're now caught up with us on our season and can't wait to hear what you think of the third episode i also agree i just i think that i would not have thought i would have loved the dynamic so much between lishi and luke but um they're they're just fun they know how to do a lot of good bouncing off of each other really well that popping scene then that one where she just looked over with her butt it's just hilarious they're so dumb and last and certainly not least we have mimi what up cena it's mimi this is my feedback for upload season three um this is gonna be like a mashup between one and two um i just couldn't get around to watching it uh before you posted and then i was like i'll just watch two um i remember when this first came out um i it was when i first became a traveling nurse and i was in washington state and i used to watch it on my lunch break and now i'm going on um oh it's 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 already been two years it's going on three years and i'm watching it on my lunch break look at that full circle anyway um I don't I'm I'm just gonna be real with you I don't know how this season's gonna go I don't know if I'm gonna like it as much um because you know one of the things I used to love was the interactions between um the angels and the actual uploads but now it, it's you know um Nathan isn't there um with uh Nora and um our girl um our black girl i i'm not i can't think of names right now but i know you know what i'm talking about um she's not there with her boo thing dummy the one that's in love with nathan <laughs> um so it sounds like after this episode she might um stay around and and take him on in addition to her new um role as the educator of the ai which sounds stupid but i digress um uh the i hope we get to see them interact um and then the other thing was okay what what i don't understand like maybe i just don't remember um from season two like why this nathan who was before family day is okay with um why do i want to call her gretchen that is not her name i like i said i can't think of people's names right now and i don't even feel like looking at them um or trying to figure them out or pausing or doing this later when i look people's names up but why um nathan isn't mad at his girlfriend for lying about uploading he seems to be okay with it because it's weird though because even if it was um before family day he still had nora right am i am i forgetting something or was this oh was this when he was like rebooted i know he was rebooted and he had like a memory thing was this is this the nathan before like when he lost his memories and he didn't remember nora 
this must be I'm not sure and it's it's been a while since season two and you know I don't go back and rewatch well I shouldn't say that I don't do that for all shows I probably have done it for the flash and then I did it for all American homecoming but I I love that show and I love the flash and I just randomly watch them sometimes when I just need a comfort show so that that has not like that's I don't even think that's the same thing. I don't rewatch it because the new season's coming out. I just want to rewatch it. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, your memory is way better than me, Christina. I haven't listened to the podcast for the season one opener, so maybe you'll go over it. But I just don't know why this Nathan isn't even upset with her. Like, he wasn't even mad at her for lying and being in that tub for weeks. Like, <laughs> I just, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, he was like, you need to get out of that tub. Like, he was concerned for her. And, of course, I, I know he loved her. But he's not even mad that she lied about, like, like I'm not saying he should, like, flip a table and curse her out. But he should at least been like, you know, you like, why would you lie about something like that? Like, let's talk about that. Let's unpack that. And, you know, she loves him and he loves her. And he agreed no more lies. But we'll see. Because every time she takes uh, two steps forward, she takes 17 back. So she just, we'll see. Um, I did laugh my butt off when she told old girl to Shrek herself and make her hideous with a bunch of boobs. And every time she makes her mad, you're gonna add, we're going to add another pair of boobs underneath your boobs. And then she ended up with a boob, like six boobs in the front and then a pair of boobs in the back. And she looked like Shrek. That was hilarious. And Nathan was just looking at her like, what the hell? <laughs> that was so funny. Um, and then Luke, I'm pretty sure his name is Luke. Luke, um, we're going to call him Luke. Nate, Nate's bestie. He was looking at the memories and then he replaced them all with dragon tails. That man is so dumb. <laughs> He's such an idiot. Um, but it's sad though because he really is by himself because Nathan was his friend and then he had his angel and they couldn't stand each other but it, somehow it was all love and now she's promoted and he got a different angel it's sad um, I, like I said I really hope that she Tasha? why do I want to call her Tasha? They're, the names are probably not going to come to me until I watch this episode 3 but I'm going to get it together for next time um, and then, um, the one thing that annoyed me was Mateo, like, why all of a sudden are you, like, so in love with Nora? Like, I know he died at the end of episode one, but he was, like, you know, more than friends. Like, dude, get over yourself. Yeah, I, I get it. Nathan's not real, like, or he was, like, re-uploaded. And can we talk about how the billionaire who paid all that money to be reanimated, head exploded, and Nathan, ha nothing's happening yet. I can't, I don't understand, like, what changed, why him, or we're not, we're not going to unpack that, because he's saying I have months, like, the other dude had fucking seconds. <laughs> why are you still alive, sir, and why isn't anybody talking about it? You're doing just great, and you, you had the nosebleed at the end of season two, and that was it nothing else and nobody's talking about this why why is he working um i think it's crazy though that people are like it, and i could a hundred thousand percent see a bunch of one percenters doing this um where they're taking away the poor people's vote so that they can make sure they they maintain their one percent status um and the fact that uploading is a thing and even after death these one percenters can still maintain power it's gonna that's fucking crazy but like as a poor person what do you get out of uploading like you're literally basically just committing suicide you're killing yourself to upload to something that you can't even like you're if it, yes it's free and you're getting all these like uh they're telling you that you can do this and that but how do you know you don't know anything like why would you choose that that can't be better like i'm sorry if i'm if i'm dead i'd rather be dead i don't want to be uploaded on a computer and i know we talked about this before but that that kind of afterlife don't sit well with me i would rather just go into it not knowing instead of 
let me be uploaded because it just keeps making me think about when we went to like the poor side of Lakeview like that shit looked miserable if you weren't rich in life you're not going to be rich in the upload like wh why would you think that's better it just blows my mind and they were just going to throw all those uploads in the river which is what I would assume they would have done with my poor ass in the first place I just I like I know this is like just um a television show but I also know how humans are especially Americans because I mean I am American I see it all the time the way they act on social media I could see a, a thousand percent people doing this especially if your life sucks you're working your butt off you're not getting anywhere you might this might seem like a better option like to, to do this and it's free and you know you can kind of live the life you've always wanted but I just to me maybe it's I'm um, just like I said my sister calls me a negative Nancy all the time and I'm a, a pessimist but I just can't believe that life after life would be free and they have this lake view but you're telling me we're doing a free one for everybody and we're just gonna all the poor people stand in line and we're gonna make your life better by uploading you absolutely not that that shit would have never sat right with me I wouldn't have believed it um but now like it seems like there's a fight between you know Freon and like, the wealthy and then that other group I forget what they call them but the group that Nathan and Nora were talking about uh I know it was a group Nora was in and they they're the ones taking the fall for everything that bad that's happened um but Nathan did upload that um I don't know the, the the video from the you know the explosion or whatever before it happened and I I don't think it it did what it was supposed to do um, but anyway um, the uh, last thing I want to talk about before I end this is that whole like milk thing when they were milking the cow and it was like just a giant humongous mutant cow and then they were like farming like pig cancer that tastes just like pig that was so gross like I wanted to throw up like yuck <laughs> awful um I am looking forward to seeing how um Nathan and Nora's relationship progress now that they're both in human form and Nathan was is so used to being uploaded that he's forget like dude you 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 got to pick the toothbrush up and put toothpaste on it so their dynamic is different as well like she even brought up the fact that she had to serve him and you know that's how their relationship started so it clearly she got some feelings about that so I, I'm just curious to see how their relationship is going to unfold um, and then this will be the true test of time and see if I still ship them they were cute when they were uploaded um, and and it was absolutely adorable when he settled on the nickname angel he was like well you you're not my angel anymore but you're still my angel that was so cute and like the whole like trying to find that like a sweet little nickname for her was <laughs> so it was very cute and funny and then she settled on you know if you're not a prince but you are my prince that was very cute um so i still like them together i re i don't remember what like if you what you thought about them christina i'm sure you'll bring it up but we'll see because i i think this is going to be the test time is the, the test of their uh i guess their their long-term relationship will uh, now that he's actually human so i'm looking forward to the storyline but i i do just get the sense that i might not like this season as much as season three but i am going in with an open mind i'm just so far just the dynamic is different and i'm not enjoying it as much but we are only on episode uh two so hopefully we get to what i'm i'm ready for in episode three so under here until next time love peace hair grease and black girl magic you know the couch mimi out that was queen mimi thank you for your feedback as always it looks like you are far more enthusiastically, at least optimistic, about the Nora and Nathan relationship than Shia and myself, which is good because we need someone that's still heavily invested in that. <laughs> I don't want to speak for Shy. I don't want to speak for Shy. 
But yeah, other than how this can evolve the plot going forward, I I'm I don't I don't know if I'm gonna be thoroughly just interested in watching them figure each other out in the real world. I'm not gonna hate it. Like you said, I'm not gonna hate it, but I'm probably not gonna be as invested. Like Shy, you are thinking, where's this plot gonna go? And I I I hope that they have an answer for us at least in by episode three or four. Eventually they're gonna have to find they're going to find out because they do have Ivan, they still have Alicia. And I'm sure the information can Luke will still talk to to um because Luke's been <laughs> he's been so mopey, he hasn't realized that there's another Nathan around and are they still going to be friends? So technically he gains another friend and that's going to be interesting if he influences that Nathan and his relationship with Ingrid. So it's almost as if we got our same dynamic because I know you said you were missing that, but just flipped on its side a little bit. I don't do many rewatches either. There, I, I can't even think of really good shows that I love that I'll rewatch. Maybe through like reactions. That's my type of rewatch. But other than that, like The Expanse, I always love watching The Expanse. I don't uh, also recall what the Family Day episode was. I'm just kind of going with it. I don't think it's going to line up, to be fair. I think that it's another one of those plot holes that that they have which is fine it's not that big of a deal to me at least to me um because it it resets a um it resets another branch of the tree kind of like dark what if jonas went out the back door instead of followed martha so i'm kind of interested to see where that goes and then tasha you called my girl Alicia Tasha. I'm going to need you to do better. We're going to leave it here. Wherever you're listening to this podcast, Podbean, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Go down to the rating section, drop some stars, leave a review. My social media will be there as well. Like, share, subscribe. And if you want to send feedback on our next episode, blackercouch at gmail.com. Until the next time, peace, hair grease, and black magic. <laughs>